Do you want to save money for your family by changing your own reverse osmosis filters? I mean, these systems look kind of complex, but changing the filter housings can't be all that difficult. But how do you disconnect the tubing at the top here to change these filters? And how often should you be changing these filters? Well, I'm going to explain it all to you starting right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. So this video is for the homeowner, the do-it-yourselfer, the plumber, anyone that wants to tackle replacing the uh, filters in your reverse osmosis system at home. Now, if you're not sure how reverse osmosis drinking water systems work, you may want to check out my video. I'll put a link in the description down below. Definitely encourage you to check that out. So how often should you be replacing the reverse osmosis filters? Well, it really depends on your family size. In other words, how much water you're using. But for most families with two to four people, you need to replace them annually. If it's only one person, you can get by kind of a year and a half. If it's a family of five or more, definitely every six months. If your water has a lot of sediment in it, this, the first filter, the sediment filter, will need to be replaced more often. If your water has a lot of chlorine in it, if you're on a municipal water supply, like I say, with a lot of chlorine in it, then you may need to replace the carbon filters more often. The membrane doesn't need to be replaced as often as the rest of the filters, and I'll put a link in the description down below. So how do you know when your membrane requires replacement? Well, what you need to do is you need to check the TDS. So reverse osmosis systems, specifically the membrane, reduce the mineral content by 90%. So a TDS meter like this can, uh, can measure the water that you're getting from a reverse osmosis system to tell you if it's time. So uh, what happens is you measure the water coming from your, your regular household faucet, and let's say you're getting 300 TDS on the TDS meter, and then you measure your reverse osmosis water. So that com water coming out of your reverse osmosis system should be 30 TDS or less. Um, if it's 50, 60, or 70, that's telling you it's time to replace that membrane. Also, if you're planning on disinfecting your reverse osmosis system, this is the perfect time to do it. I've got a video that shows you exactly how to do that disinfection process. And again, I'll put a link in the description down below. And you can get all of your replacement reverse osmosis filters from our e-commerce store, waterestore.com. I'll put a link in the description down below. All right, let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is you need to shut off the water going to the reverse osmosis system. Now, if you're not sure where your shutoff is, then just look for filter number one or filter housing number one. And beside it, you'll see that there's, a, there's the tubing connected to it. So that's going to be the inlet. So if you follow that tubing back to where it connects to the plumbing, that's where your shutoff will be. So sh your shutoff might look like something like this one here which has this T-handle on the top. So to shut it off, you would just turn it clockwise to close that valve so that it shuts off the water to the system. Or um, hopefully you'll have this one here. This is actually a much better shut off. And uh, so to turn the water off, you just turn this 90 degrees. And when the handle is 90 degrees toward the direction of where the uh, tubing is coming out to the reverse osmosis system, that shuts the water off. Then you're going to turn off the tank. So at the top of the tank, it'll have a shutoff valve like this. And again, you just turn it 90 degrees. That turns off the flow uh, coming from the tank. Now, in, in some occasions, I've seen some, some brands of uh, reverse osmosis systems that don't have a shutoff on the tank. If they don't, then what you're just going to do is when you open up the faucet, you're going to drain all the water from this, the uh, whole reverse osmosis system, including what's inside the tank. Now, I prefer to shut off the tank if you have one, because you can use that water that's already in your reverse osmosis tank to uh, flush the new filters. Now, talking about the faucet, so after you've shut off the water going to the reverse osmosis system, you shut off the water coming from the tank, then you're going to want to shut off uh, or you can want to open the faucet like that on this one and, uh, and you're going to get a little bit of water coming out and it's going to release the pressure throughout the whole system. So to open up the filter housings, you should have received a wrench uh, with your reverse osmosis system. Now if for some reason you didn't get one, you can always order one of these uh, or you can always go with one of these. You can get these at any um, hardware store or something like that. They work equally well to be honest. These are the ones that I use when I'm out uh, um, changing the filters in reverse osmosis systems. So then what you do is you would loosen up each of these filter housings. Now I've already loosened this one uh, somewhat, but you would use that tool to loosen this up. Whoops, so as my wife says, lefty loosey, righty tighty. And uh, 
then you just slightly loosen up each one of those. Now, before we go any further, you need to make sure that you've uh, protected the area uh, underneath the, the kitchen sink, if that's where your reverse osmosis system is, or in the basement, wherever you're doing the work. So it's always a good idea to put down a fairly large towel in the area because there will be some water spilled. All right, so you've got the filter housings a little bit loose, so the next step is to actually open them up. So I find using a container something like this, it's just the bottom off an old water jug that I cut off, in fact, I think it still even has the label on it from our store here. And, uh, and then what I do is I place that underneath the filter housings like this, so that as I unscrew the filter housings, the water gets caught in this dish. So then as you've unscrewed the filter housings, you'll find the filter inside, of course. And then, so like I say, carefully move it over to the sink or a pail or something like that, where you can dump out the water. Now I always recommend that you do one filter at a time because there are different kinds of filters in those filter housings and you don't want to mix them up. Now the other thing you should be careful of at this stage is make sure that there's an o-ring up here. And uh, so what you can do is you can remove that o-ring and uh, wash out this filter housing. You can use just uh, normal everyday um, dishwashing soap to wash out the filter housing, um, clean that o-ring and you do that for all three filter housings. Now make sure when you're cleaning out the filter housing that you look down inside. And what you're looking for is to make sure that this rubber gasket that's on the end of the, um, the filter didn't get left behind. I've seen that happen so many times. People say, you know what, I kept tightening and tightening the filter housing and it just kept on leaking. And the reason was that one of these little uh, O-rings on the end here, I'll show you, they come off like this, ended up being stuck on the bottom of that filter housing and they were trying to put the new filter on top of this one and it just wasn't tightening. So make sure you check that out. So before you put the new filters in, one thing I always recommend is make sure that the, the O-ring is in here and apply some Plumber's Clear silicone grease onto that O-ring. And what that does, it makes the O-ring last longer, but it also keeps it from stretching. So again, um, you'll need to replace it less often, but uh, it's definitely a cheap insurance and, and also, you don't need to tighten it quite as much uh, to uh, complete the seal. I'll put a link in the description down uh, below. We have this available on our e-commerce store. All right then, once you've got the new filter in, then you would, whoops. Again, make sure you're putting the, the, the uh, correct filter in to the correct housing. It definitely does make a difference. Typically what happens is the sediment filter is first. Some reverse osmosis systems have, um, so you see when I say first, I mean stage one. So some reverse osmosis systems have actually a, a combo filter that goes in there, a sediment and a carbon. But, uh, but again, it depends on, on your system. So once you've replaced those filter housings at the bottom, then you would make them hand tight. And then I use the wrench and give it about another quarter turn or something like that. Just enough to make sure that it's tight. You don't want to over tighten it. You just want to tighten it enough so it won't leak. So the next stage is to remove the, the post filter that's on the top here. Now some reverse osmosis systems might have two filters on the top. Now the part that uh, some folks uh, have some difficulty with is how to remove this connection at the end here to replace this filter. So those filters have a simple quick connect type fitting like this one here. And uh, so basically how it works is you push in. So you're pushing in and you're holding this black or dark gray color back from the rest of the, 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 um, the fitting. So basically you're pushing in, you're holding that collar back, and then you're pulling it out. And uh, so the same thing works on here. So again, what I'm doing is in this one here, I'll show you a little bit closer. So you see that there's a blue collar there, and then there's the, the fitting in that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push in on the fitting, I'm gonna hold back that blue collar, and then while I'm holding back that blue collar, I'm gonna pull the fitting out. So you can see here, I pull that back, and then I slide the, I slide the fitting out. So that's all you do. And uh, now you do have to be careful with this um, post carbon filter on the top here. So you see that one end is thicker than the other end. So it's shaped like an arrow. So what that means, it, it, there's a definite direction of flow. So make sure the new one, you put in the same direction as the old one. So normally what I do is I undo one end and then I reconnect the new filter with that same end. 
onto the fitting here to make sure that they don't get mixed up. And then to reconnect it, you just slide it in. You'll feel some resistance. You'll think you're done, but you're not. Push harder and it slides all the way home. And then just to double check to make sure that it's sealed properly, whoops, <laughs> sealed properly, you just give it a tug like that. So some reverse osmosis systems like this Gold Line 50 reverse osmosis system has uh, fittings on either end. And uh, so what you need to do is you need to unscrew those fittings. So let's have a closer look at that. So as you can see here, here are the fittings. So the first step is to undo the tubing that's coming into here. So again, you push in, hold back the collar and pull out the tubing. And then what you'll do is you unscrew this fitting like this. And again, have a container handy because there will be some water that leaks out uh, once you, you take this off. So then to remove the filter from the fitting on the other end, you just use a pair of pliers or channel locks or even a, an adjustable wrench to hold the fitting in place and you just unscrew it from there. So as you take that off, you can see there's some remnants on there of uh, Teflon tape. That's the white, white part on there. So again, I recommend uh, putting Teflon tape on the when you're reinstalling. So in a scenario like this, just use the white Teflon tape, loop it around. Oops. Again, with a situation like this, you don't need to use a lot of Teflon tape. So you can just give it two turns, something like that. And then to reinstall, you would hold this, this part and grab the end and thread it in there. So you don't have to make this incredibly tight. It just needs to be a little more than hand tight. Um, it, it, like again, you don't need to force it right in there like that. And uh, again, you want to make it just so it doesn't leak. So you do the same for the fitting on the other end. So the next step is you want to turn on the water and check for leaks. So if you have this kind of a fitting, you open this up. Now I don't open it all the way right from the beginning. I just open it up about halfway and let the system fill and check for leaks. Make sure there's no leaks before you go any further. If there aren't, then you can open it up all the way. And again, if you used, if you have this kind of a shut off that you used, again, you would open it up. So righty tighty, lefty loosey. So you would run it to the left to open it up to allow water flow and then let the whole system fill. Once it fills, have a look for leaks. If there's no leaks, then what you do is you go to the tank, turn on the tank. So again, you would turn the handle in the direction of the, the tubing that opens, it turns it on. Once you've turned it on, then you're going to go over to the faucet and you're going to open it up. And, uh, and you're going to get some water, uh, you're going to get some uh, the water coming out, obviously, but you're also going to get some air. So it's going to be some bursts. So I always like to put some towels or something like that around so you don't get uh, uh, water all over the place. Now, don't be surprised if some of the water first comes out kind of a gray or a dark, almost a black color. And that's the carbon fines being flushed out of those uh, post carbon filters. And that's fine. And let the water run slowly. So while it's running, then you can go back to opening this up fully. If you haven't opened it up fully at this point, the supply to make sure you've got water and you're going to want to run all the water through that's in the tank. So let that run through and then turn off the faucet, let the water refill or let the tank refill, I should say, and then flush it again. So what you're doing now is you're flushing the filters to get rid of uh, any, any um, little fines that come from the filter. You want to make sure before you start using the water that you do that. If you're not sure which replacement filters you need for your reverse osmosis system, I've got a great video that shows you how you can determine that. I'll put a link in the description down below. Click up here for my next video on reverse osmosis systems and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments, add them down below. I read them all. I'd love to answer yours.